Hey guys and welcome back to another video and today this is going to be the first video back in Roblox Studio where I'm scripting so I've been in it in a lot because I've been working on my official Roblox game that I'll be teasing very soon, releases next month, hopefully. So today I thought I'd get you guys a little bit situated with how Roblox Studio kind of works so if you guys want to make your own game you can do the same path that I followed a little bit by myself. <laughs> So I looked at different scripting videos from other YouTubers and I saw that scripting is somewhat easy and is somewhat hard. So first we want to get used to Roblox Studio. So if your Roblox Studio looks like this, this is what we're going to change. So in here you have your select, move, scale, rotate, your terrain tool, terrain, terrain. So on here you add terrain, this, so this is what it looks like, you can add terrain. I'm not very good at terrain. I'm getting better at it though. But you know, that's where you can find that. And here's where you can insert things. So first, go over to your view tab. Um, close out the terrain editor if you open that. Open up your explorer and your properties. Both of these things should be open because it shows all your things that are gonna be inside of your game. You always wanna utilize this very well. And your properties tab is going to work as well. You don't really need the toolbox open since in this tutorial we're not going to use the toolbox. It's going to be purely scripting based, but you can have your toolbox open if you want. Always, always have your output open because this will show you if you have any errors in your scripts. So if we go to home, we're going to insert just one singular part and now we're going to see what would this do for the part. Now. Really, if we put if we input a script, let's put the script into a server script service. Since I always put my scripts into server script service, we're just going to start this off with print hello world. Okay. And then if we hit run, in the output, we should see hello world right here. Hello world, got it from the script. Now, if we stop it, now we want to now we want to start inputting these things. Different properties are in play, so this is what we have for the properties to have in our part. You have the brick color, color, the material, reflectance and transparency. We have the name, the parent, whether it's locked or unlocked, whether it's archivable or not, the size, position, orientation, orange. Or, origin position, origin orientation, and all these other useless stuff that can collide, lets you walk through objects, can touch, lets you know if you can touch it. So the touch property, where we can get into different touch events. In another video, if this one does really well perceived, we will do touch events in the next video, which is really amazing. You can do a lot of things with touch events. But let's see, and you can anchor it. Always have your parts anchored depending on what you what it is always I always select my parts to be anchored at all times but first let's see if this works if we do so you want to define your part so local part equals game dot workspace so anything that's in the workspace and you have stuff that's if you have your script and server script service you always want to um, you always want to define your things that you're doing first so local part equals game dot workspace and we want to define what the part is and that is part. Now, let's see if I just do part dot anchored equals true. Let's see if that works. I don't know if this will work, but if I hit run, let's see if the part became anchored. Yes, the part did become anchored. Okay, so now the part did become anchored. So now we've we've already initialized that the part will be anchored when the game is ran and when the game is running. So now let's change its brick color. Okay. Let's do part dot brick color equals brick color dot new. And let's go for, you know bright red. Now if we run the game, the part has changed to bright red. 
and the part is also anchored because if we come back into here as well again the part is anchored now if we hit stop just so we know that the part is getting anchored we can do this as print um no fall no fall print no fall then we hit run the part has changed the color so we know that the script is working no fall so we know that it's anchored now let's change up the material so part dot material equals I don't know if this will work Okay, no equals. Let's just do this as. Don't know what it is. Part dot material equals brick. Let's see if that works. It works. Okay, I was not confident on that one. There's a lot of things that scripters are not confident on. Now we've defined basically anchoring your part. We did basic print function. Um, we've done, you know, changing your brick color, and now we've also changed the material. Now there's also something else that we should do. Maybe we can change the transparency of the part, so part.transparency. Um, so part.transparency, let's change it to 0 0.2. Now every time we run the game, Basically, what's going to happen is that everything is going to get changed based on this part. Now you can see that you can see through the part a little bit because the transparency has been changed to 0 0.2. Now if we stop, you can see that everything was reverted back to the back to its originals. So everything was reverted back to its originals. So if we go back into the script, um, so now we've already defined most of this. Um, Let's change its size. So we can do this as part dot size. I think it'll be equals udim two dot new two. Let's do this as one one one. I don't know if that will work. So I don't think you can use udim. Yeah. What if I just do this as one, one, one? So I don't know how you can define a, yeah, I don't know how you can define a part's size based on this. So basically, you guys can figure that out. Basically, what's going to do is going to put the size as one, one, one. So this is what the part will look like if you're going to edit the size. So yeah, I don't know how to do that. So let's, we're going to skip on the size. So yeah, so let's just skip on the size. Let's just change the part dot name. Let's just name this as Mickey was here. Hit run. And now that was changed. Now, what if we want to change the position of the part? So now currently the part is positioned in this area at 1.951, 0 0.5 is 16.384. Now if you want to change the position of a part, you do part dot position equals, this is where you get into the udim2 dot news. So udim2 dot new. Now it's always going to be set in X, Y, Z. So let's set our X coordinate to zero, maybe our Y coordinate to one, and our Z coordinate to zero. Let's see what that does with the part. So what it should do is it should move our part. It did not move the part. Hmm. Should have moved the part. I think you didn't do that new. Hmm. This one is 
Okay, hold on. I'm gonna research this. Okay. So we want to do this as a vector. Instead of udim2.new, vector3.new. I want to set it to the same one. 0, 1, 0. Now, just hit run. Now it has changed. Now what if we do that the same for the size? So part.size equals vector3.new111. So we're changing the vector. Yes, that works. Okay. So now we've changed the position, the color, all of that. Now, is that all the properties within the part that we want to change? Yes, we can, we can, so there's a little things that you can do. So the same thing will go. So if you want to change the can collide, you just highlight your anchored and can collide. We'll make that as false. So that all basically what this would do is on your can collide, it will just check it off. And if you do the same thing for can touch, it will check it off because if true means it's going to be checked, false means it's going to be unchecked. So pretty much that's all your properties that you should know. So here, let me just do this as pro properties. So you guys can know these are your properties. These are the basic properties. So your script will basically do anything for you. Now you don't always want to just place down a part in your game. So like, oh, here's a part. Now this part will also get changed with this part. So the naming gets different. So you can pick this as part two and maybe in your script, you could also define part two as something else like local part two equals workspace dot equals game dot workspace dot part two. And basically everything that has part, you can recopy this and just make it part two. So everything will work from your script to change your properties, but you don't just want to change your properties through a script. There's a lot more that you can do with scripting than just changing a part's properties. Now that you got to know the script a little bit, now that when you input something and you call for something from the part, it will change it on the server side. Now, what can we do with events? What if a player joins a game? We want them to, what, what if we wait for the character to join the game? Or what if the player touches this object? We want it to change. Or what if the character clicks the object? That has to do with events. And in the next video, we'll go over different types of events in your scripts. So you get to know different basic events. Now there's a more advanced events that you could use and those are basically your remote events and your remote functions. We'll get into that in the advanced section, but all of this is basic scripting. Literally anyone can do it. So yeah, once you have this done, you literally learned how to change properties of a, um, of a part and a script. This will be very, very, very useful and will come in handy for different types of times in the game. Because a lot of times you want things to be different and you can call it through a script, basically changing the transparency, changing the material, changing the brick color. So these are all basic properties. And a lot of this stuff will come in handy when someone clicks a part, walks on a part, and it'll help you with the events. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys did enjoy this, be sure to hit the thumbs up and maybe subscribe as well. I do a ton of different videos. This is one of them that I'm getting back into scripting. And I also do some gaming on Bloxburg and different games as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy, like, subscribe, whatever. I don't care. Share this with your friends because um, it will help me out greatly. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys did enjoy this. And I can't wait to see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.